Welcome to Cheap Controls. We make videos on things that we struggled with, hoping to help you so you don't. Consider subscribing and hitting that bell. In this part, I'm going to add a real-time clock to the display. It really doesn't have a lot to do with the actual control of the heat mat, but I thought it'd be nice to have a clock on the display since I'll have something up anyway. Depending on the feedback I get, I might do another video where we set the clock through the connection. But I'm going to wait and see if I get feedback for that first. Otherwise, this might be the last part of this series. So the only thing we're going to do with the connection is we're going to add another text field so that we can write to it, whether it's on the whatever page it's on, I'm going to set it to global. I'm going to set the font to two. I added another font. It'll just make it a little bit bigger, but if you see the size of the room, I won't be able to fit if I put the month, year, date, and the time. So you can see it's just a little bit bigger. Then I'm going to make the length of it 25. I'm not 100% sure. Probably 20 would be fine, but we'll just set it to 25. And then I'm going to put a fake date in there that uses all the characters. So that way I'm using up all the spaces I know that it fits, and we should be good. I just have to remember that it's called T3. And that's it for this. Now we're going to switch over to the Arduino. I'm going to add another tab to the Arduino page for this. And I'm going to call it RTC. In every video in this series, I've started right from where the other one left off. So if you want the files, you should be able to go to CheapControls.com and download it for each part. In this one, since we're just adding the real-time clock, it works over the I squared C bus. So there's really not too much to add to this page. I'm going to put it right underneath the software serial. So all we have to do is include the wire.h library, and then in the setup, we'll just have to start it. You can do some error detection here, like if wire begin to do some things, but at this point, since it's not crucial to the application, I'm just I'm not going to do any of that. We're just going to keep it simple. That's all we have to do on the main file. Uh, the other work is going to happen in the delay tab, and then I'm going to add some functionality into the RTC tab. I didn't add a library for the clock itself. I generally don't with the with the uh, real time clocks. I just do it through the I squared C bus, and so it will add a little bit of. Uh, complexity to this page. But we're going to start just by adding a function called RTC and we're going to return a string from it and that's why I have that string in front of it. Now the real-time clock works in something called BCD instead of decimal. So I have two helper functions that convert BCD to decimal and decimal to BCD and they just help out. I'm not going to go into it too much in this video. I have another video. If you, once again, if you head over to Cheap Controls, do a search for real time clock. This is something that I include if I have the space in my Arduino files, and it just shows the addresses on the I squared C bus where the different aspects of the device that you're using it. In this case, it's the real time clock, so we want to know where the seconds, minutes, hour, date, month, and year. There's also a day, but we're not going to use that. Um, that tells you the day of the week, 1 through 7, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday through Sunday. And there's also a way to read the temperatures, but we're not going to worry about that. We're going to create an integer called error. In this application, we're not going to look at that error, but I collect it whenever I end the transmission. And then that way, if there is a problem, I could serial print it just to see what, what the state is. For I squared C, you begin the transmission with the address of the device itself. And that's separate from the addresses of the memory within the device. So there's the address of the device, and then within it, the way I look at it as memory locations. And so I'm going to start from location 0. So we write to that I squared C address 0, and that'll be the starting point for when I do all of my reads. And then I'm going to request 7 
locations, and I'm going to start with the seconds, the minutes, the hours, the days, the date, the month, and the year. I don't use the day, but just to keep it simple and I don't have to stop and then send another begin transmission, I just collect all seven at once. And then you have to do some manipulation on that because it doesn't always come back correctly. You'll notice on the month I do a modulus command to get it in the format that I want. And then we're going to create a string called time string. And now we're going to go through those variables that we collected and we're going to create one long string that we can send to the next shin. Now I'm going to return that string back to the asynchronous delay and in the next step we'll go to the asynchronous delay and collect that string. But what I do is I just, if the month is less than 10, then it's only going to be one value and so I add a, a zero in front of it. And I do that with for all the values. And then for the month and the day I, I put um, forward slashes to denote those, month, day, and year. And then I put a space after the year. And then for the time, I put colons. So hopefully that, that's fairly clear when we read it out. And then at the bottom, I return that string. So this doesn't do anything unless it's called. So we're going to go over to the asynchronous delay and add a line in there. So we're going to place this right after we do the UART check. And that's that little box that tells us if we have a connection. So we do a serial 2.print. We have to put that page 0 because it's a global variable, t3, text, and then we have to put that backslash or escape sequence another quote. So we actually send the quote in the string. And then I'm going to collect the RTC, which will, when I run that, it will get the, the string that we want to send. We have to put another quote after it, and then we have to follow it up with those three double Fs. So we should be all set to go. The only problem is going to be is if the date isn't set right. And I purposely left the battery out of the real-time clock so that we will get a bad date. And then what we'll have to do is we're going to have to come back here and we'll have to set the date. Now, like I said, I purposely left the battery out. So when I connected the power to the real-time clock, it set it to 1, 1, 0, and then the, the time is all zeros. So you can see that it's working because we're counting our seconds up. We're still getting our temperatures. But what we have to do is we have to figure out either in the Nexion or in the Arduino how to set the time. Now for the most part you're going to have a battery in your real-time clock and you're not going to have to set it very often. So for this video I'm just going to set it up in the Arduino and then I'll comment those lines out when I don't need to set the time. So we're going to set it right after the int error. And what I normally do is I just leave it commented out. So we'll begin the transmission with the address just like before. We'll write to the location we want to start at, which is zero, and then it automatically increments. So as long as we keep writing data to it, it will write it to location zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And then after that, there are some other things, some alarms you can set, but that's beyond the scope of this video. So now I just have to uncomment this and make sure my time's set right. So the date is 5-9 of 2022, and then it's 8.39 in the morning. The date doesn't matter, but that's just because I can't remember if one is Monday or if one is Sunday or how it does that, so I'm just going to leave it at 4 for right now. Now I'll upload it and go back to the display. Now the problem is going to be is... Once I upload it and go back to the display, it's going to be set. It will always be at this exact time. And it's going to keep writing it over every time it goes through the loop. So you won't see the time change until we come back here, comment it, and then upload it again. And there you can see 5-4-2022 and it's 8-57, or approximately there. So you can see that it works, but you can see that it's also stuck because it keeps writing that over and over and over. I'm going to go back and set it, um, and then what I'll do is I'm going to upload it again with the correct time, and then I'm going to upload it again with it commented out, because a couple minutes has gone by since I did this. Okay, now you can see that the seconds are counting up, and it's working. I did do one thing wrong. It appears that I had the minutes going, I thought they were in BCD, but it appears that they're in decimal. So I'm going to go back and make that change, and I'll show it to you. 
So I set it to 23 and it came up 37. And we'll just send the value. It makes me wonder about all of these if I needed that or not. Um, I'm going to upload this now. There, now the time is correct. Um, I can't remember right now which way that goes, but I do have an older video, so if you're concerned with when to use BCD and when not, you can go back to that video. So at this point we have a clock, we're reading our temperatures, we know that the relay is clicking on and off, so I pretty much have a working floor mat now. Of course now it's the summer and I don't need it anymore, but uh, come next fall I'll, I should be ready. If you are interested in seeing me set the clock through the nection, I'll make another video on it, but I'd want to see a couple comments on that first, otherwise I'm going to probably move on to the next project. Well that's about it for this video. If you like what you saw, consider giving me a thumbs up, and also consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.